Hello, brothers and sisters. We're certainly living in challenging times. Whenever I speak now and people ask me to give a topic, I say the general theme should be living as Catholics in challenging times. So I'm going to talk about where we're at after the recent Supreme Court decision overturning Roe versus Wade and what some of the implications are for us personally and as a country. Uh, first of all, I'd like to say, though, that uh, we need your support in order to continue doing what we're doing. And I'm not just talking about our YouTube channel, which is really amazing what the Lord's doing with it, but I'm talking about all the missionary work we're doing all over the world. We have teams right now in Cameroon working with priests and lay people. We have teams in uh, African countries. We have teams in uh, Eastern Europe uh, trying to strengthen the church there, trying to stay strengthen Christians, trying to help people uh, follow Jesus more closely and be witnesses to him. We also are doing a lot of work with young people. We're doing work with young adults through that branch of our ministry called Intentional Discipleships, ID. We're doing work with high school students, so uh, boys and girls. It's called Be Love Revolution for Girls and Zion for Boys. And we're continuing our daily radio programs. We're continuing our daily weekly uh, TV programs, the choices we face. So all that takes some money. And quite honestly, we need your support to keep going. And all your donations are tax deductible. We have an outside board of directors uh, with priests and bishops on it that kind of oversee what we're doing, uh, both in the United States and Canada. And so if you just go to our website, renewalministries.net, uh, you can find a little button that says donate now. And we, we hope you will. We hope that you could keep following us on YouTube, that you subscribe to the YouTube channel by clicking the bell. And uh, these are challenging times and we feel like the Lord is calling us to be a, a voice of clarity, a voice of reason, a balanced voice in a time of uh, great, great emotions, negative, negative and positive and uh, contradictions and confusions and division. So I'd like to talk today about after row, what now? And it was really, let's face it, it was a tremendous, incredible victory for the United States Supreme Court to overturn uh, the so-called constitutional right to abortion that previous courts had decided was there. And it's a brilliant um, decision. It basically said this right was invented. It's not there at all in the Constitution. And if people want to live in a country that has abortion, they need to vote for it. Uh, and so now the battle goes back to uh, the states. What we need long term, of course, is a constitutional amendment protecting all human life, including all unborn babies. That is so far off and so unlikely right now. But so was the recent decision to uh, overturn Roe Ro versus Wade and uh, deny that there's any right in the Constitution to kill babies. So. Uh, Impossible things can happen and do happen. We just had one happen in, a, in an amazing way. And it's going to really save a lot of babies' lives. And it's going to really now bring the battle back to the states. So the battle isn't over. It's just been brought back to the states. And each state's going to have a battle. And we need to be ready for more fighting, for more war, for more prayer, for more witness, for more financial giving to support those who are supporting women who are having babies. So um, my wife and myself have been contributing to uh, pregnant counseling centers, Christian pregnant counseling centers for years. We've been contributing financially to Right to Life in our state, the state of Michigan, uh, trying to help educate people to the value of human life and the, the evil of abortion. And we're gonna continue doing that. And if needed, we're gonna step up. Uh, we both have joined the St. Vincent de Paul Society, and I try to help people in need in different ways. And so we're trying to build that in as kind of part of our life, and I hope you do too. Now, what's going on, though, as a battle is not just a political battle. It's not just a public opinion battle, but it's really a spiritual battle. And that's becoming so manifest in the response that people are making to 
uh, the decision to uh, overturn Roe versus Wade. And we need to remember that this is part of the primordial satanic attack that, uh, you know, the devil uh, in the garden said, you know, disobey God, you'll be gods, you know, even though he said you'll die if you do this, do it and you're not going to die, you're going to become like gods. And of course, that was a horrible lie. And, and that's why death is coming to the human race. That's why we all die. That's why there's sickness. That's why there's pain. That's why there's suffering. The original sin of rebellion against God continues to unfold in, in the whole human race. And it's just really a, a terrible, terrible situation. And it comes to a really intense sort of focus here in the killing babies issue. But we need to remember that as important as it is to preserve human life, as important as it is to obey God, in the fifth commandment, thou shalt not kill. Even more important is to avoid eternal death because the underlying battle is about eternal life or eternal death. It's about sharing in the glorious life of God's love forever, united with him in an absolutely wonderful way that the scriptures talk about as marriage or being eternally separated from himself being eternally separated from love and from goodness because of our own stupid choice. And Romans chapter 1 talks about our own stupid choice. It says they had a knowledge of God, but they didn't honor him. Uh, they're without excuse. They exchanged changed the truth of God for a lie. They thought they were wise, but they became foolish and their minds became darkened. And so what we're seeing is a tremendous manifestation of the darkness of the human mind and the human will when it turns away from God. We're seeing an incredible manifestation of darkness, of evil, uh, and, and we're really seeing uh, actually manifestations of the demonic. We're seeing the desecration of churches, of statues. We've been seeing it for several years now. We're seeing the firebombing of churches and our pregnancy counseling centers. Just recently in Seattle, we saw people uh, kicking a Bible in a soccer game, using the Bible as a soccer object, and then throwing it into uh, a portable public toilet, desecrating the Word of God and laughing about it. At recent, you, you know, concerts, you know, very popular concerts with thousands of people at them, at various music awards ceremonies, we're seeing famous artists. Uh, publicly express hatred towards the Supreme Court justices. Uh, at a recent music awards ceremony, uh, artists after artists got up and said, F the Supreme Court, using that ugly word, that, that word that people feel like they're cool and on the cutting edge to use, but it's, it's gross. Pink, a famous artist, said, that anyone who's pro-life should never effing listen to her music again. I'm sure there's some people that would be happy to take her up on that, but it's just awful when famous artists that many people listen to are using their fame to uh, promote the killing of babies in a very gross and vulgar way. The lead singer for Green Day at a concert in London said f the u.s f the supreme court and he promised to renounce his citizenship and uh, move to england at concerts all over the world these gross denunciations continued lizzo who's a famous popular artist right now says she's going to be donating five hundred thousand dollars to planned parenthood another new singer but who just won the best new artist award at a particular awards ceremony at los angeles said f the supreme court and was met with thunderous applause at the microsoft theater in los angeles the leaders of the major european countries not hungary not poland which are trying to hold the tide against abortion also what a horrible thing it was for the united states supreme court to uh you know uh, overthrow 
Roe versus Wade. And then it's how, how distressing is it to see our government leaders, uh, Speaker of the House, President, Vice President, uh, leaders of cabinet agencies are all bowing to do all they can to make sure that abortion is as available as possible doing everything they can to help people get abortions then we have major corporations some of them right out say they've done the math that's an exact quote they've done the math and it's actually better for the company to pay four thousand dollars for an employee to go to another state to get an abortion than to carry the pregnancy to term because of the cost of maybe medical insurance or having babies maybe the medical leave, the, the parental leave that would have to be given, losing a cog in the machine for six weeks. I don't know, that's that's pretty gross, that's pretty awful. I, I sure hope there's some corporate leaders that are pretty soon are gonna start to speak out against this stuff. I mean, it's just, it's kind of wicked. It's, it's all about money, and it's all about virtue signaling, it's all about wanting to be considered cool, and with it on the right side of history, and as I've said this before, if you're on the right side of history today, what the left is calling right side of history, you're going over a cliff, you're going into darkness, you're going into misery, you're going into loneliness, you're going into a place that could lead you to eternal hell. Well, people are talking about a summer of rage, and we've seen some of that already. We haven't seen what we've seen in previous summers of rage. But we're going to be faced with great hostility, great intimidation. You could call it persecution. Christians are going to be demeaned, going to be mocked, going to be made fun of in many, many places in our country and other countries. And it makes me think about what John Paul II said years ago, just before he was elected pope. He says, we're now in the final confrontation between the gospel and the anti-gospel. Unfortunately, there are people who call themselves Christians who are aggressively in favor of killing babies. Not possible, not possible. It's totally incompatible with following the Lord and saying there's nothing wrong with killing babies. Utterly incompatible. And it's so good to see some Catholic bishops starting to take our serious our teaching seriously about what a grave sin it is to kill babies and how incompatible it is with being a catholic in good standing and therefore being able to go to communion how shocking it is that the whole church isn't really standing up and saying this and how shocking it is that the signals coming out from rome are are what they are it also makes me think about what Archbishop Gomez said a few months ago, and I've done videos on all these, by the way, and if you want more depth about John Paul II's warnings or more depth about Archbishop Gomez and what he said, uh, or, you know, what he said basically is that all the powers, all the levers of power in our culture are now in the hands of people who are hostile to Christ and the church and are trying to create a new world order by eliminating Jesus. And that's that's really bad. And of course, Benedict XVI, after he resigned as Pope, made this amazing statement where he said, you know, 100 years ago, people would have thought it crazy to talk about homosexual marriage. And now people are being excommunicated from society if they're, in, if they're against it. And he says, this is the Antichrist. And quite honestly, what we're seeing is an incredible manifestation of satanic power we're seeing people's faces sometimes distorted by hatred and rage and you can almost say that's demonic in fact uh, a news commentator just the other night who was talking about some of these extreme reactions said it's demonic it, it, it is demons are active and really working to keep people in darkness and to lead them to disasters the World Health Organization has said, what an unfortunate thing is, the Supreme Court decision that overturned Roe versus Wade. So many of these international organizations are subject to political pressure, are, are doing things for economic advantage, 
are doing things to keep in power and it's just kind of pathetic the corruption of so-called science janet yellen the, the head of the federal reserve has said what a terrible thing it will be for the economy to uh reduce abortions what a bunch of nonsense what a bunch of nonsense what a bunch of political posturing and total nonsense it also makes me think of father michael scanlon's prophecy from years ago where he talked about uh your money what if it's valueless what if it what if it has any value what will you do what what happens when you'll see lawlessness in your streets or what 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 are you going to do when you see this country that you love fall apart and our country may be in the process of falling apart and of course the the message of his prophecy and probably that's the most popular video we've ever done i think it's got over three hundred thousand views you can find it on our youtube channel just put in father michael scanlon prophecy renewal ministries youtube channel and and he basically said what it's all about is the lord shaking us from holding on to anything else but himself and then if we hold on to himself if we hold on to the lord if we're rooted and grounded in our faith if, if we're confident in his teaching if we're at peace in our heart because of his love for us and us being in right relationship with him we have nothing to fear like jesus said don't fear those who can kill the body but rather feel and fear that he who can kill soul and body in hell and jesus said even when persecution comes don't be afraid uh if they did it to me they're going to do it to you but i'm going to be with you and you don't even need to prepare in advance what you're going to say because the holy spirit will give it to you when you need it and and that's just really true mary just very recently at medjugorje and yes i do think that something really important and valid is happening at medjugorje said i am with you in these days when satan is fighting for war and hatred the vision is strong and evil is at work in man as never before so hey maybe we are in the final confrontation i don't know we'll find out and uh, you know i've done a video on that two events that need to happen before the lord returns and they certainly match what we're seeing right now you know remember one of the events is the great apostasy a, a massive turning away from faith on the part of those who, who once had it we're seeing that in a significant way in many countries the second thing of course is a removal of a restrainer that the lord has placed on evil and we're going to see unrestrained evil whether this is those signs being fulfilled or not or beginning to be fulfilled or a good dress rehearsal i don't know but we're living in very challenging times we need to draw very close to the lord what's the solution same old same old holiness evangelization concern for our own relationship with the lord and concern for other people coming to know the lord so that they can live rather than die because they're joined to the risen body of christ and partake of his body and blood in the holy eucharist so i'd like to end with a passage from second peter chapter 4 verses 12 to 19. there is so much in sacred scripture that's such an important source of strength and of insight dear friends do not be surprised at the fiery ordeal that has come on you to test you as though something strange were happening to you but rejoice in as much as you participate in the sufferings of christ so that you may be overjoyed when his glory is revealed if you are insulted because of the name of christ you are blessed for the spirit of glory and of god rests on you if you suffer it should not be as a murderer or thief or any other kind of criminal or even as a meddler however if you suffer as a christian do not be ashamed but praise god that you bear his name for it is time for judgment to begin with god's household and if it begins with us what will be the outcome for those who do not obey the gospel of god and if it is hard for the righteous to be saved what will become of the ungodly and the sinner so then those who suffer according to god's will should commit themselves to their faithful creator and continue to do good 
let's encourage each other let's help each other let's help each other continue to believe continue to hope continue to love even our enemies and to bless even those who persecute us and turn the other cheek rather than to take vengeance because the lord says vengeance is mine says the lord and justice will be done unrepentant wickedness will be condemned those who surrender their life to the lord will live forever and those who in their pride and their foolishness and their rebellion and their hatred reject his mercy and refuse to humble themselves will be lost let's do all we can so as many as possible find the lord and are saved god bless you